A drone fly, buzzing from flower to flower, this little insect is a honeybee mimic, pretending to be harmful when it's not. This particular species is known by its binomial name, Aristalis tenax. But what does this mean? What's a binomial name? All will be revealed. In this episode, we'll be exploring biological classification. Biological classification is a form of scientific taxonomy. As we've learnt in Phil's Insect Orders episode, taxonomy is simply a way of putting things into categories. Okay, so we want to open our journal to page 52, and we are going to title this page Taxonomy Classification, and then we're going to define taxonomy. Okay, so on page 52, your title is Taxonomy Classification. Uh, we went ahead and defined biological classification as a method of scientific taxonomy. So then we need to define taxonomy, and that's a way to classify anything. In science, you may find that the common name for something, such as a turtle, um, is not specific enough and not detailed enough as to be able to differentiate between all the different species or all the different types of turtles. So um, we use uh, taxonomy to start to subdivide categories of things until we get down to the specifics of there's only one particular species or one particular um, animal that or plant or whatever organism that this could describe. It is simply a way of putting things into categories. Biological classification is how scientists categorize all living things, from bison to bacteria. The man who came up with it all was Carl Linnaeus, who came up with a system of categorizing the natural world based on shared characteristics. Okay, so go ahead and write Carl Linnaeus. He's the one that came up with a way to categorize organisms based on their shared characteristics. This was in about the mid-1700s uh, that he came up with that. The, uh, form that or the format that we use today has been improved upon since then. Uh, we know science is always changing, so it's not exactly the same as it was in the mid-1700s. It has increased in complexity because we have actually increased in our knowledge. So like in the 1700s, they didn't know anything about DNA. So therefore, they couldn't classify things based on whether they had DNA. They didn't know anything about cells and the insides of the cells and the nucleus, so we couldn't classify based on does this have a nucleus or not have a nucleus. So as our information, our base has increased, so has our ability to categorize things. Sticks. Most importantly, he came up with something called the Latin binomial system. A two-worded system used today to give a unique scientific name to every known species. Okay, so Latin binomial system is a system of using a two-part name, using Latin terms, for every known organism. And as we discover new organisms that don't fit into those already existing categories, then we, they create a new name, so a new two-part name of Latin terms. It's important that when you write these terms, they're, especially if you're typing, they are in italics. We'll come back to that in a little bit. His ranking system was much improved by Charles Darwin's principle of common descent and the onset of modern cladistics. Instead of organisms being grouped purely on shared characteristics, they were now grouped according to evolutionary relatedness using evidence from multiple fields. So what are the ranks that Linnaeus came up with? Well, let's go back to our drone fly. We'll start with the species, Aristalis tenax. This is the Latin binomial name and is unique to this species. Tenax is a species name given to only that specific type of drone fly. Aristalis is the name of the genus 
there are nine other species of drone fly in Britain that share this genus, all of which are closely related. All okay, so we've got our example, Aristotle's tenax. The species is actually Aristotle's tenax. Um, the genus is Aristotelis, so you have a genus name first and then a species name second. That's the two-part system, or the binomial, bi meaning two, uh, nomial meaning name. Members of this genus are found in the family Cervidae, the hoverflies. Hoverflies belong to the order Diptera, the true flies. Flies are insects, and insects are part of the phylum Arthropoda. Animals with an external skeleton, segmented body, and appendages, like crustaceans, arachnids, and centipedes. Ultimately, the drone fly is part of the animal kingdom and is a eukaryote, an organism whose cells contain a nucleus. Okay, and here we are. I've just listed them um, uh, starting with the species, which is the smallest, and going all the way up to the domain, which is the largest category, a lot of times you'll see it flipped or inverted where domain is at the top because it's the largest category and then they make kind of an inverted pyramid going all the way down to the species. So these are the general taxonomic ranks. You can remember them using this helpful mnemonic. Do koalas prefer chocolate or fruit, generally speaking? But sometimes extra ranks are needed to classify a distinctive group within a taxa, making things a teeny tiny bit more complicated. In the case of the drone fly, all British Aristalis species and another 18 British drone fly species fall into the tribe Aristalini. The hoverfly family in Britain contains another 11 tribes. Okay, let's look at a more familiar example. A fellow mammal, the jaguar. Its Latin binomial name is Panthera onca. The genus Panthera is shared by other big cats, like the lion, leopard, and tiger. Big cats are part of the cat family, Felidae. And Felidae is part of the order Carnivora, which includes creatures like dogs, seals, and bears. Carnivora is a mammalian order, and mammals are part of the order Chordata. So when we look at these categories, we notice that carnivora, meaning that they eat meat, or mammalia, meaning that um, they have uh, live birds and that they have milk for their young. Chordata means they have a spinal column. Uh, the kingdom animalia, in comparison to uh, plant kingdom, and then of course eukaryote and prokaryote. So all of these are ways that we can categorize things. Other chordata classes include our feathered backbone relatives, the birds, and the aquatic jawless fish. Again, we can add intermediate ranks. In the case of the jaguar, we get subspecies. Jaguar populations differ morphologically and genetically because of isolation and their subsequent adaptations. Jaguars have eight recognized subspecies. So why not just call it a jaguar? Well, jaguar is its common name, but common names can differ from country to country or even within regions within a country. For example, this plant is called cleavers, sticky bud, or even goosegrass, depending on what part of the UK you're from. Sometimes two different species can share the same common name. In Europe, Arithicus rebecula is called the robin. In North America, Turdus migratorius is also called the robin. The Latin binomial name makes things far less confusing. It's unique to the species and is the same in every country and every language. It's universal. But remember, the Latin binomial name is not just a label. It also implies biological relationships, specifically evolutionary ones. So hopefully that shed a bit more light on how biologists categorize life. We've got specific videos on orders and families, and if you want to see those, click here. In the meantime, catch you later.